Ryan Jarrell here for MMA News, and it's always great having my next guest on the program, Joe Selecki, and he'll be back in action June the 1st at UFC 302 when he meets Grant Dawson. Joe, how are you? I'm doing good, man. Just uh, on a little break here before uh, after training, and then I got to teach a little bit, so uh, well, not too quick, but uh, tonight. So uh, just hanging out, recovering, and uh, enjoying the beginning of camp, or I guess we're out of camp. I don't know. It's all a grind, but uh, enjoy myself. <laughs> Very good. Well, we're excited to see you back in action, man. And when I first saw this fight announcement, I was excited about this fight. I have to imagine you thought the same thing. Grant Dawson's a tough opponent. What were your immediate thoughts when you heard about it? Yeah, uh, it's an exciting fight, you know. Um, and, you know, there's a couple things that come out when I think about it. So, uh, you know, number one is it seems like, you know, where we're both at coming off of kind of weird circumstances, right? Obviously, both taking losses, but it almost feels like the UFC was like, because usually I feel like, uh, at least in my experience and with some of my teammates that I've watched, you know, you lose a fight, you kind of go to a loser's bracket. And while we're both coming off losses, like for me especially, I know I'm ranked pretty far behind him, I'm getting another crack at a guy actually higher up than the last guy I fought, you know? So, um, you know, I almost feel like they see the same thing that, probably I feel, and I can't speak for Grant, but probably he feels about his performance. Like, mm. I'm so much better than that. Fighting's just crazy. And it feels like that's kind of what they did with this matchup. Like, yeah, just let's see which of you two, you know, grapplers moves on toward the rankings. So uh, just blessed with that opportunity, honestly. So, uh, yeah, tons of respect for him. Uh, honestly, you know, every, every time I've ever dealt with him, super cool dude. So uh, one of those fights where it's like you just respect the guy, train super hard, and it's crap. And uh, I can't wait. Yeah. And again, crazy endings to, to both of your most recent fights. Um, I, I think I just saw it too, because initially I didn't see a venue announced for, for this car, but it looks like it's going to be in New Jersey at the Prudential Center. Is that accurate? Uh, honestly, I can't say, and I don't know. My contract said TBD, but um, just from what I've Googled and seen as well, it, it, it was reading that, which is, would be awesome. So um, for me, that's a bit of a home game. You know, it's about an hour from where I'm from. So uh, that would be awesome. All these years in the apex and everything. Uh, obviously, I got out in the crowd in Austin, but not, not for too long. And uh, not too many people out there, but this would be uh, quite a bit of a home game for me. So that would be awesome if that's the case. Yeah. Well, again, this is a marquee lightweight bout. I'll be interested to see if you guys are on the main card or not. Maybe it's the, the feature featured prelim. Who knows? Let's talk about the last fight, Joe. Uh, Drakkar, close. I mean, things are going so good until they weren't. Can you just kind of run me through your, your thought process now looking back on it? Yeah, absolutely. I've had a lot of time to reflect on it, you know. Um, it Obviously, first of all, like, it's weird. It's a weird situation, right? Because you come back, and there's two sides to me. Like, there's a competitor, control freak. It's like, you know, and obviously, Jiu-Jitsu Black Belt, I could have and probably should have hooked the leg, right? But that's a strong freaking guy. <laughs> You need two hands to extend the arm. So I was just going for a win, you know. In hindsight, I do feel like I was – I mean, on the feet, I had good eyes. I didn't get to, like, throw with him a ton. I saw enough to catch a kick and run him down, you know. So I did feel like I was better everywhere, so I probably didn't need to rush trying to catch a quick sub. But um, all that being said, like, that's a legit – capitalizing on a great opportunity for him. That's a win, you know. So you come back and you have people being like, oh, man, like, that's just a freak thing. And the – Type A in me is like, absolutely not, man. Like, I did this. I did that. I was going to stand and keep my distance first, and I saw a quick opportunity to take him down. I took it. Um, that wasn't the plan. You know, whatever it was. So um, I lost a fight, you know. But then on the flip side, you guys were like, oh, I just hate that you got beat up. And there's a party that wants to be like, hey, man, like, fighting's crazy. It was just a crazy thing. Um, but I know, you know, I even there's even things in the process that we've been picking apart. Like, um just going back and looking at what I can do better, you know? How did I feel walking out? Did I feel as sharp as I felt in my other six fights? Uh, probably not. Um, the training was the best it's ever been. The process in the camp was the best. There's a couple of things I think I could tighten up on my side of things, on my preparation. I've always been a very good competitor. Um, I'm not a guy that struggles with, like, breaking or even crazy nerves. Like, I just get good nerves, excitement. I've been competing my whole life. That's why I do it. But in that process, you can take for granted, like, hey, there is processes to be a better competitor, you know? Uh, to be more mentally sharp. There's ways to make sure your central nervous system is firing. There's, you know, exercises you can do and stuff like that. So um, that's one of the, I mean, we didn't have a ton of X's and O's from the fight to, you know, I don't, I'm not coming back in the gym and somebody's yeah. teaching me an arm bar. Um, you know, I had to make that joke a little bit when I was teaching class that Monday, but um, yeah, just, just looking at what I can do better, you know? So uh, 
it, I felt in control until I wasn't. And, and that's pretty much it. You know, all camp, we worked a lot of, if he gets on top, working back up and stuff. Uh, never once did I go for an arm bar, you know? So to me, that says, Hey, I don't like that. That's, that's acting off of just like survival instinct and not game plan. So, you know, maybe I need to work on certain things. So, uh, yeah, just some good takeaways. It was a long process. Came out of it banged up, which, which sucked, but, um, in that was able to still get back on Monday. So I have not missed, you know, had not missed a day since, uh, you know, we flew back December 3rd and then December 4th had been in the gym. Um, you know, had a shoulder injury, just, you know, whatever. Um, but just worked through it, worked around it, bunch of treatment, PT, like, again, it's, it's really revamping the whole process. So, uh, you know, I was saying to my coach, like, I've always been like the work hard, work hard. I work harder than anybody, but I have to work hard at the right thing. So like, even this, I was like, no one's going to rehab harder. No one's going to listen to their PT more on what exercises to do and, uh, you know, whatever else it is. So, uh, it's been quite a process. It's probably been, you know, losing sucks. It absolutely sucks. Um, but that being said, um, you know, with me being me and what I believe in it and who I believe in, it's like, I, I just believe that, that that wasn't God's plan for my life that night, you know, and, mm -hmm. Um, already I see some of the clarity that, uh, came from it, which, you know, after struggles like that, I think, you know, God kind of takes you in the wilderness to then, you know, start the flesh. And, uh, there was some good takeaways in that, you know, in that time. And, uh, now it's on to the next, you know, so some good things came from it. It wasn't fun. It's never fun. I want to avoid that feeling at all costs going forward. But, uh, one of the biggest things we've been doing is focus on the process, not the outcome, especially in this crazy game. So Kind of just have to put it in the past, take the lessons, and move on. I know it's kind of long winded, but it's been a long uh, trip. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the worst that you've ever been put out before? I mean, you've been you know, training and for, for a long, long time. I, you know, whether it's in the cage or in practice, have you ever been put out like that? So honestly, and not like I'm a pretty transparent guy. I wasn't. I, I was. It was completely good stoppage. I don't mean that. I was never out. Out. Right. Like I've been knocked out one other time by uh, Nicholas Moda on the regional scene. And there's a time lapse there, like everybody talks about. Like, oh, I remember, you know, my coach saying, move my feet, didn't move my feet, woke up, went, oh, I think I lost. This was more like a, uh, almost like a sleep paralysis, right? Like, I was there the whole time. And it was never even a glimpse of being out. I passed all the concussion protocols. Um, and they had some weird ones. The doctor in Austin was kind of a quack. Um, <laughs> count backwards from 100 by sevens. So I'm like, man, I... I fight for a living. Like I couldn't yeah. do that being slammed. Um, but I passed them all. You know, I still remember the three words he gave me backstage, cat helmet table to remember, you know. Um, so that's kind of the weird thing. It was more like a body unconscious. Like, I, like kind of like when you, uh, you know, I've been dropped before in a fight and your legs just go. Um, so it was more of that. Now, if he followed up, I think I would have been separated from consciousness entirely. So mm -hmm. that was good because never had a, as much of a headache after the fight, which is awesome. You know, um, it was way more my shoulder. I separated my C joint, tore some ligaments. Uh, yada yada had been a pin cushion for you know the weeks to follow and uh yeah just it was just uh so injury wise worst i've ever had just because um i've never had anything that i had to work around before i've always just pushed through but i'm not as young as i was and had to actually rehab this time so um while i was training the whole time i never felt like i you know kept all the conditioning and um you know even the grappling i just had to pick my partners carefully and make sure we were doing the right things to get back to 100 percent, and then uh it's kind of nice because for me, never really, you know, A, I mean, of course, you get out there. It's weird. I never even, uh, I think I've heard Poria say that too. Like when you see yourself in that spot, you never even see yourself weak like that. You know, I, I kind of, of course, you know, on fight week, I'm human and this guy can hurt me and I can hurt him. But you also walk through everything, just like I said about injuries. Like I just kind of walk through everything. Like, man, I'm, no one's stopping me. Like I'm going to be fine. And, you know, I never lost a fight, just ran out of time, like that yeah. kind of thing. And then you see yourself like that. And then on the flip side, when you're actually, you know, hurting and not able to maybe use, you know, something the way it's supposed to be used and yada, yada, you start to, you know, almost be like, oh man, like, am I ever going to be back to feeling strong again? You know? And now I am. And I was a little while ago, but, uh, it is kind of weird as an athlete to go through that because, you know, when I think of people that can't use their arm, I think of, you know, somebody who's sedentary and, you know, takes a fall or an old person mm -hmm. or something. And, uh, it was not that. So it kind of just makes it, even though, you know, when I went to the doc and the PT and the stem and all that, no one was ever like, Oh, you're not going to be hundred percent. It still felt that way. So in my mind, it's like, yo, this can be taken away from me at any minute. So the second you're back to a hundred, you're almost uh, even more grateful, even more fired up. And it kind of takes away some of the pain of that loss. Cause you, you know, it's like the hierarchy it needs. Like, I don't like, I don't even care about getting that one back. I just want to get back to what I do. So um, 
it kind of made it bittersweet in that regard, you know. So, uh, yeah, that was the worst I've come out of a fight injury wise, but not not knocked out. It was weird. I was, it was it was a TKO, a KO, but it wasn't like no time lapse, which is so strange. Well, that's good. That's definitely a, a very good thing. That was just a crazy night with some of those slam finishes. It was very bizarre. Um, but, you know, a lot of fighters like yourself, Joe, that are in their prime, they want to fight every, you know, three, four months, be as active as possible. But with this uh, last fight, just the way that it ended, is it almost kind of nice that you you have this more of extended break where it'll be almost seven months come uh, your next fight? Is that is that kind of a good thing? I think so, probably. Um, I didn't want that. You know, of course, if it's me, I want to get back in there the next week. I want to you know, ice my shoulder and, and touch up with your car again that night, you know, <laughs> um, but that's just not how it works. And then, you know, it wasn't, again, it's, it, 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 I'd made the joke, you know, uh, actually I was texting my old coach, Mr. Hassett, New Jersey that night of the fight. And I was like, Oh, you know, uh, God's plan, not mine. You know? And then I made the joke, like God's plan, not father's plan, like Habib. I was like, father's plan for me would have been like, you know, finish college and go do something else. So, um, it's the same thing. It's just God's plan, man. Like I wanted to turn around quick. And it probably wouldn't have been a good thing for me, you know? So I couldn't. So, yeah, it's, uh, we were asking, we asked for Atlantic city, uh, cause you know, just being from there and everything. And that I never got anything back and thank God. Cause I wasn't as far along as I thought to be in ready to fight, you know, I would have felt rushed just a little bit. Okay. And, uh, and then, yeah, we just never heard anything, heard nothing. And then they came back with this and it's like, that's kind of the perfect timeline. And now if, if it ends up being Newark, even better, I was trying to get on Atlantic city to fight back at home, kind of rushing that timeline. Now I didn't need to. I end up, you know, if we end up getting to go there, no harm, yeah. no foul. It's a little hometown fight. Everything's the same. So uh, just God's timing, not mine. That's awesome. And and, and I think uh, you just gave me a, kind of a revelation as to maybe what your next walkout song needs to be. I, th I think it needs to be God's Plan by Drake. What do you think of that? <laughs> I don't know. We got to see what the uh, profanity is like on that. <laughs> but maybe so. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Well, I think there's a clean version or they can at least, you know, there we get go. some of that, but I, I think that'd be perfect for you. Yeah. It's something like that, like with deep, deep meaning, or we might just go, if it's New Jersey, might just go full out Bon Jovi hometown. Let's get it. Cause that's uh that's all we got to offer in New Jersey is Bon Jovi. And like <laughs> maybe Meryl Streep was from there, but she doesn't like uh, MMA. So forget her. Right. Well, Francis Ngannou walked out to God's plan when he fought Tyson Fury. I don't know if you watched that fight. But, there you go. Okay. You know, that, it'd be good to follow. Uh, you know, that was an amazing performance from him. You're going to go out there and, and get the win here in, in this one. So, you know, we'll see what happens, but I, I wanted to, you know, to get your, your thought just on the 155 division. I mean, my goodness, it's as deep as it's ever been. The performance that Dustin Poirier just put out, uh, beating a young, you know, really someone that a lot of people thought potentially could have been like a, a future champion in, in uh, St. Denise. What's your takeaway as a fighter? He seems to be like your favorite fighter's favorite fighter now, the way yep. he goes out there and competes. Can you just kind of sum it up your thoughts on his performance? That's exactly what I was going to say. There's two guys, at least for me, but also I think for most of the division, when they win, like, because now I, I think like where I'm at, like seeing this with the fight with Dawson, right? He's almost right outside the rankings. So like all these guys could become competition. So you got to walk that line of being a fan. I think Poirier is the guy, like every guy, even in the division, like I'm off my couch screaming. Like, yeah, like, like I know him, you know, because I think he's all of us, you know, he's, he's blue collar. He's on the come up. He's fighting. He's got the family. He's doing everything the right way. Um, and it's nothing against Benoit. I think he's awesome too. You know, he's the class act. But uh, yeah, it's just crazy, man. He, the most him and Jim Miller are those guys. I think for almost everybody in the UFC, uh, you just can't help but root for them when they do well. And honestly, I I, I drank the Kool Aid a little bit on Saint Denis regarding Dustin because I didn't know if he had the defensive grappling. But it was like the day or two before. I was like, man, honestly. And I know people are laughing about the guillotine thing. Maybe don't jump close guard. But I was like, yo, he leaves his neck out, and Dustin loves a guillotine. Like that was that was something I saw in Saint Denis polls right from the jump. Is he doesn't care when he shoots. He's just going to come forward reckless abandon. Um, there's not a lot of guys with a tight guillotine like that, though. Dustin does. So I think that helps because even if he doesn't get it, you can see how close it was. We're all wincing on the couch. If you don't think inside, his heart rate's going up. Saint Denis thinking he's about to get finished, it's going to tax him, tax him, tax him. And, uh, you know, on the other end with Saint Denis, like he's got all the tools in the world. But I keep saying to my students and my teammates that were like, oh, well, he's tough. And it's like, yeah, but you can fight like that until you can't, right? Like, you can go, I'm tough, I'm a RoboCop, I'm going to walk forward, and I don't care what he does until you can't, right? Like, it's either going to work or it's not, and on Saturday it didn't. You know, it works against a lot of guys, but Corey doesn't care. He's going to turn your lights out. So sometimes you got to faint, you got to move your head, you got to set up your takedowns. 
especially against the highest level. So uh, I think he just showed his levels to this, but uh, I'm sure Santini will be back too. Yeah, no doubt. Well, uh, there's definitely some really interesting matchups for Poirier, you know, next, but is there anyone right now that, that you think can beat the champion Makachev? He looks like an absolute monster, regardless of who the opponent is. Is there, who, who is the guy? Let me just rephrase the question. Is there a guy at the top of the division right now that you would think can, can beat him and, uh, and become the new champ? It's somebody that's got to keep them off them, right? But can strike too. Cause you look at guys like, uh, you know, Gamrot's really good. Uh, his wrestling's very good. But, you know, if he's wrestling back and forth with Dariush, then um, – and MMA math never makes sense, but who knows? Can he keep Can he keep Islam off him or can he get him down? Um, and then if they do stay on the feet, he keeps him off him. He has good stand-up, but so does so does Islam, you know? Uh, maybe Armand? I don't know. I, I, we haven't seen enough. It's, it's the same thing. Are we all just drinking the Kool-Aid on the new guys because they're new guys, you know? Um, maybe Gaethje. Is it going to be like the Habib fight? Is it really that there's one and then there's everybody else? You know, I, I truly don't know. Uh, I think that's what makes it exciting in this division, though, because it's not like some of the other ones where the champion cleans it out completely. We have so many believable contenders that keep hopping in line, and it's just like, uh, maybe not, you know? So, uh, and then even then, you get guys like Dariush, and they get to Oliveira, and they can't get through him, and Oliveira can't get through Islam. So, you're like, maybe it's the top three guys. I don't think, I don't think, um, Poirier is the guy, though. You know, I think, uh, you know, I was saying to my buddy today, we were talking about the fight, and I was like, man, I can never tell if he's just doing robodope or really trying. You know, that's a great thing. But on a guy like Santini on the ground or on the fence, you can do that. You can't do that with Islam. He's not he's not a gross motor skills guy just trying to hold you down and, and make openings. He's finding them because he's a technician, and there's no space to get up. So you can't rely on stuff like dumping him over the top or – you know, scrambling your way out. There's nowhere to get that scramble going. So I don't think Poirier is the guy unless he can hurt him early. Um, obviously, be rooting for him. He fights him and would love to watch. But I don't think it's him. It's, I think it's got to be somebody new or maybe Gaethje with that wrestling background if he can actually keep him off him. I'm not sure. Yeah, well, regardless, again, there's so many great matches at the top of the division. Before we transition to your camp in this upcoming fight, just give me two predictions here for UFC 300. Gaethje versus Holloway, Oliveira versus Sukarian. Uh, I think, I think Gaethje um, with the power is going to be too much. You know, I think it's similar to the Dustin fight. Uh, and, and Gaethje can box. You know, his feet are always moving. He's not going to stand. Well, he might, right? If he stands in the pocket and trades, it means he's hurt you or you've hurt him, and then he's super dangerous. Um, aside from that, if he uses his feet, I don't know that Max is going to find him like that. You know, you think about what Volk's done with uh, with distance with Max, and he's you know much shorter. So. I think that's a really fun fight, and I think Gage is going to take it. Uh, the other one you said was uh, Oliveira and Saruki. And uh, yeah, Saruki. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, man, I'm going to say Oliveira still. I think he's just too dynamic to hold. You know, on the feet, he's so long, he's so rangy, and he hurts everybody. And uh, even if Saruki can, can put him down, I don't know that you want to do that because then you got to keep up with all the scrambling and all the all the constant attacking. So I'm going to take Oliveira. Okay. Uh, UFC 300 is <laughs> such a crazy card. Uh, th- I crazy. mean, I don't know if, if you were hoping to get on that card or not, but my goodness, this is just like one of the best cards I- I've ever seen put together. Uh, as far as camp goes, obviously, you know, Jim O, you got a, a bunch of killers around you. I do want to ask you about John Salter. I was disappointed to see him retire, but you know what? I know he's he's getting close to 40 if he's not already, and what a great career he's had. Uh, is that it? Is he going to come back or is he retired for good? I don't think so. I think he said, what did he say? If uh, if Aaron Jeffrey went on to get the title, maybe he would come back. Or, or maybe he said Costello Van Stennis. I can't remember. One of the guys that he had common ground with, he said, if they got the title, I would come back and try to fight him. Um, but now with the way the promotion is going, I don't think that's going to be a thing. You know, they're doing cross promotion. Um, so no, I think he did it the right way, man. He did it completely the right way, the honest way, the, mer- the merit-based way, like never sold his soul and started, you know, becoming someone he wasn't. Uh, represented his faith and his values and uh, and went out on a win, which is really tough to do, you know, um, especially just fighting through injuries and stuff. And, you know, he's been wrestling since he's like 12 years old. So all the wear and tear to still be putting in work and not cutting any corners at the end was uh, really impressive. Uh, that's actually somebody we've had to call up because I'm fighting Grand Dawson. I'm like, hey, yeah. big, strong, heavy guy. I could use a big, strong, heavy guy. I'm going to go down there, maybe some, and then I think he might come up here and help too. So uh, it will be fun to have him around again. It won't be fun to have him, you know, beat me up. But, um, yeah, just did it the right way, man. All class all the way. And, uh, yeah, it'll be good to get back in uh, some training with him. 
Yeah, always been a big John Salter fan. Great guy, great fighter. Uh, outside of him, any specific partners that you're going to have for this camp to get you ready for Dawson? Yeah, we're kind of lining them up, right? We up the intensity this week. We're still 12 weeks out. So um, it, I always say, if I'm left to my own devices, I'll go nuts. But we have it lined up like a camp. So it'll almost end up being like a 12 week camp, but, you know, really ramping up a little closer, probably, you know, 10 or eight weeks out. Uh, but we've got the guys, man. We've got so many good wrestlers here. Um, but not just that, guys that are built that way, guys that are taller than me, guys that, you know, what's always happened in my career, it seems like, I don't know if it's, we don't keep guys my weight around, or I like to think it's that my grappling is good, so I have to go with the bigger guy, <laughs> but I don't know which one it is. It could just be, I have no 155 friends, but, uh, it seems like I've always had to grapple the bigger guys to get ready for these fights, you know, whether it was being John's training partner for five years, um, you know, today I'm grappling Weidman, getting, you know, trying to get out from underneath him and uh, just a ton of guys like that. So we have wrestlers galore. We have um, Paul Carson, who's a 185er. He's fighting Saturday. Great training partner of mine. He's like a smaller framed 185er, really explosive. Great wrestler from App State, Division I. Um, Caleb Spears has become one of my main training partners. He's a couple time Division II All American and fighting now and doing really good. Um, and then uh, I have got Nick Rodriguez, great 155 pro. He's just stocky as can be. He's about 200 pounds out of camp and all muscle. Um, so we've got him. We've got uh, – I'm going to be using some of the 85ers too, like I said. So we have Chris Honeycutt, um, who was a four-time Division One All-American. I had to wrestle with him yesterday. He is a tank right now. He's fighting at 185, but he is – he's a big boy. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, Tom Lane, Division One All-American, fights at 185, walks around in the 200s. So – just getting a lot of those guys for the level changes, right? Because Grant has a good level change and he's out wrestled a lot of guys that don't have the credentials he does. Mm -hmm. But I do think a lot of it is his physical attribute based, right? He, he's a big, strong guy for the weight class. So I don't know that he's chaining a bunch of, you know, crazy combinations of takedowns and chain wrestling. I think he just gets on it and he's, and he's just throwing these guys around because what I've seen a lot of at, you know, in, in the highest levels is guys are like, Oh, I don't like going with him. He's 170. He fights at 170. Like, Dude, what is this? This is, you know, I've been doing jiu-jitsu my whole life. You grapple everybody. So um, we've got a lot of the big guys ready. We've got some – and, and I know that Grant is great at jiu-jitsu as well. So, you know, we have to have that aspect. So we're talking to Wyman today. I'm hoping back in, taking my back, and all the worst positions. We're doing all the worst, you know. And then we're going to get to my bread and butters too. But, uh, you know, we're kind of setting the table with, uh, you know, all those guys for to torture me. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, on the other side is then I can get some of my, uh, my revenge. But uh, – yeah, it'll be good. So we've got quite quite a bunch of hammers lined up. And like I said, Salter um, is going to be a part of that as well. And I'll probably go down to his school as well, um, which is cool because I haven't been back there in a little bit. Because every time I was out of camp, I was hurt. <laughs> so uh, it'll be perfect to, to get up with those guys too. Just tons of great jiu-jitsu all around and, uh, and wrestling too. And then those guys all fight. All the guys I named, they're fighters. So you have your built-in sparring partners right there. Yeah, and that Weidman guy that you mentioned, I think I've heard of him before. He's pretty good. He's uh, okay. What, yeah, yeah, he's, he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, still quite a ways out. But what's your weight today? Can you divulge that? How heavy are you? Uh, probably closer to like the high seventies. Um, you know, when I did, I did a grappling match last week, and I think I was like, I had to weigh in at one eighty, and I was like right underneath there. So I'm not all that much smaller than probably what Grant is. You know, I just I just get lean. So, um, but as fight camp goes on, I've never. I, I never get out of shape, you know, so like I always stay very lean. So that's a, especially the older I get, I feel like I just got more dense and uh, never gained any fat between fights and just gained a little bit of muscle. So, um, you know, mid to high seventies and that way in camp, it's not fat camp, you know, it's right. just getting in shape. And as you get in shape, it seems like you lose those three or four pounds and then the rest is a water cut. So um, I'm never really killing myself on fight week, which is nice. And I hope that, you know, in those fights where you got to put your foot on the gas that it kind of taxes the other guy a little bit. Well, this is a really important fight for the both of you guys. And and we know how good Grant is. The guy's a stud. He's got like 13 submission victories, if I'm not mistaken. Is this the hardest fight of your UFC career? Yeah, they all are. You know, every fight, the next fight is always the most important and the toughest. Um, and no matter what it's for, for circumstances or, you know, is it the best guy? I, we don't know. You know, I thought, um, you know, at the time, Dracar was the hardest fight I had. And uh, it was it was not all that difficult until it was, right? So you just never know. But, yeah, this is the most important for sure. Um, a, coming off a loss. You know, you don't want to go two losses in the hole there. Not in this league. Um, and then, you know, look at what's at stake. Look what's on the other side of him. 
uh, you know, put myself up there. So, yeah, and he has a great body of work. So, I mean, you don't rack together 20 wins by being a slouch. Um, he's a great fighter, somewhat of a specialist, which makes it a fun puzzle to solve. Um, and, you know, I think I can grab with anybody in the world. So that makes it a fun puzzle to solve, too, because now, you know, there's a couple ways I could take it uh, strategy-wise, right? I do think I have the superior skill set in other areas. So it's kind of the balls in my court as long as I can, you know, use the wrestling I've developed – it's kind of up to me, I think, you know, on the perfect night, what I want to do. And, uh, you know, the plan would be to keep them guessing because I don't even know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to know until I'm out there and make my reads, right? right? You don't know if you want to grapple, you want to kickbox. I don't know what I want to do. And it could be the clinch. You never know. So um, I do know I think I'm superior in all those areas. So just a great opportunity. Definitely the most important fight of my career, like every fight is. And, uh, man, it just means something to have that chance to maybe come back home and fight and come off that loss and just, you know, just so many good things happening here. I can't wait. So it, I assume just based on what you're saying that you think that your grappling is better than his. If that's a wash, if, if you guys, uh, you know, can kind of like stymie one another and this turns into a stand up fight where you're striking, how do you like that area of your game versus his? I love that. Yeah, I love that. I mean, I haven't had, you know, I really haven't had that fight to show it. And when I do, you know, um, when I have, you know, when I've gone tit for tat with some of the guys that are starching people, it just seems to be like, oh, yep, jujitsu. <laughs> and I really don't care. You know, I, I don't, it doesn't really bother me. But, um, you know, if you go back and watch that Miller fight, it was super boring in two and three. But in round one, you could hear the shots bouncing off his head in the apex. <laughs> and I think it was Cormier or something like, he's throwing heat. Like, yeah, I can, I can do that, you know. And no one would ever accuse Jim Miller of not having good eyes or a great left hand. So um, he wasn't getting shots through, you know. Um, De Silva, same thing in the third round, pulled my ribs out just kind of to go for broke. It was ugly, but it was a scrap. It was tit for tat. You know, he was supposed to be some Muay Thai fighter from Brazil. And it's like, okay, I'm just the grappler that's grabbing the back of your head and elbowing you ugly and punching and landing hooks. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and that was, you know, that was years ago. So um, I think the biggest growth I made in my career has been in the last year, last, you know, 18 months. So um, if it comes to that, I'd be really excited to show it. But I'm sure he's working too. So, uh, but I'll, I'll take my, man, I'll take my fight IQ on the feet in the clinch forget jiu-jitsu over anybody's in the world you know keep oxygen going to my brain i'm in the best shape absolutely possible if i keep that oxygen going to make my reads i really think i can outstrike anybody obviously uh, if you can get in and out of there and not take any damage get an early finish that's that's ideal right but would it be even nicer to to go in there and control where the fight goes and beat him for all 15 minutes? Would that say more uh, to, to the, you know, the lightweight division, if you were to do that rather than catch him early and, and put him out? I don't know. You know, I really, I don't know. Uh, it might, right. It might. Or then sometimes you do that and they go, well, he had the flu or he had, you know, you never know. So, uh, it, but then you come out, you knock somebody out or you strangle them quick. And they're like, you're the next best thing since uh, Dustin Poirier. So you can't, I can't worry about that. I don't know. You know, um, we're all seeking the perfect fight. I think we're all seeking a, a Volkanovsky masterclass. Every time we go out there where somebody's like, wow, this guy's just leaps and bounds above the rest. Cause you know, I can speak for myself. I know what I do in training, you know, and I've, I mean, I've had great results in the UFC, but even then I don't think it scratches the surface of the skills that I possess. So um, yeah, I would love to get to show some of that, you know, um, that's the plan always uh, things unfold. You don't know, but uh, yeah, absolutely. I think that's a that's a great option. But man, it's not about how do I want to finish him or what's going to happen. It's it's kind of just get after it. You know, like I'm I'm fighting like this is the last fight of my life. You know what I mean? Uh, that's how you have to be. Just, I'm willing to go out of there, exhaustion, stretcher, whatever it takes. You know, because here's the thing: you see what happens on, on when you're feeling good, and you see what happens when you're feeling bad. It doesn't really matter. You know, look at the last fight. It, it, after that, it's just it's kind of freeing. You just like. Okay, I've seen the worst. I'm willing to go through that again. I'll go through that a hundred more times to to have that chance of putting you out, you know. And uh, that version of me is something that I really, I really like being in that in that mindset and coming off that feeling. And you know, obviously, it's great to come off wins. It's great to stack up, you know, win bonuses and performance of the night bonuses. But that feeling is something that it's just different, you know. And I'm sure he's probably feeling the same thing coming off a loss, you know, or maybe he has a lot of doubt and questions. I, I don't know, you know. Uh, but I know where I'm at and I know what I'm willing to do to get my hand raised after this. And, uh, you know, game plans aside, it's just true grit and will, which that part I've never really struggled with. Do you have official, do you have an official prediction for this fight? No, no, I don't. I think I'm going to get my hand raised and I always say 15 minutes, but I don't know that, you know, I don't know that it's going to take that long. I don't know that he's not going to 
you know, leave his chin up. I don't know what's going to happen in that regard, but I do think tit for tat, I'm going to be better than him everywhere. I'm going to fight, fight, fight. And then, you know, that's the thing about this fight is, uh, you know, he, he's, he's persistent, but I really don't believe I'm ever out of a fight. So I just feel like even then it's not even a fighting for a decision. It's just fighting to do damage. It's fighting to, to score, 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 grab the neck, reverse, get on top. And I really think, uh, I think it's going to be an eye-opening one for me. How many fights do you have left on your UFC contract? Is uh, is this the three. last one? You have three more. No, okay. there's three. Yeah, yeah, three. Well, you got to do your job, but I have three. <laughs> you have three. Okay. <laughs> you never right. know. There's no security in this thing, but I got three. Okay, very good. Well, we're excited to see you back in there, Joe. And as always, man, it's a pleasure talking to you. June 1st, UFC 302, Joe Selecki back in action against Grant Dawson. Before we do sign off, man, as always, I want to give you the floor. If there's anyone you want to thank, anything you want to plug, or is yours? Yeah, just all the guys at Jim O, man. It's been great. Uh, the training's been great. And I, I hate we didn't show it the last fight. What a great camp it was. But uh, I truly plan to show it this fight. You know, it's just been – we just have a wealth of knowledge here, man, from the coaching and, and Jeff Jim O to, down to the, you know, the teammates. We have, like, a very very great group of peers, too, that can coach stuff. You know, like I said, all the high-level wrestlers and all the guys I shouted out. Um, just want to thank all of them. Of course, my wife, who's just been, you know – from start to finish of this career, you're not finished, but start, start to current day, just a rock, man. Um, just amazing. And it's just been amazing to have her by my side. You know, we had the whole family out there for fight week last time. Might do it again. Uh, just a true blessing to to be her husband and their dad and just being out here doing this thing. We were, I was texting my coach last night and he was like, we were talking about the matchup and how exciting it is and how it's like, oh man, like what a change of pace, like a specialist, you know, specialist versus another, spe you know, and I was like, how many different ways we could take this and this and that. And he was like, dude, what a, what an exciting life you get to live. And I was like, yo, for real, like, and to have my family along for the ride and all that. So um, everybody like them is always my instructor back home, John Hassett. Um, got to go up and see him recently and just love him, appreciate him. It was great to be around him and the school up there. So if you're in New Jersey and you need training, Hassett's Jiu-Jitsu. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. And, and thank you for giving me the time as always.